the U.S. government has moved $600 million worth of Bitcoin to a Coinbase wallet. Are they going to dump all of their Bitcoin in the market? And is the bull market now canceled? Well, that's what we're going to discuss in this video today. And most importantly, we're going to discuss how this is going to impact you on the short term and long term. So make sure that you watch this video until the end. And if you want to see more valuable market analysis like the one that you're watching right now, then make sure to hit the like button and to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be posting regularly throughout this market cycle to make sure that you position yourself for maximum profits. All right, let's go. As usual, I've prepared a bunch of interesting charts, tweets, and news updates that are going to give you a really great insight in what is currently happening in the market. So let's start with the first one. So over here, you see a tweet. And basically, uh, this tweet is saying that the S&P 500, so the stock market, uh, has now added almost $4 trillion worth in market cap, so value, uh, since the bottom of the crash on the 5th of August. So that's $4 trillion that has been added in just nine trading days. So if you calculate, that means that the S&P 500 has gone up with around $440 billion per trading day. That's insane. And here you see how it has been almost pretty much straight up from the market bottom. So again, it pays off to be greedy when others are fearful and to be fearful when others are greedy. That's a famous saying from Warren Buffett, of course. And this shows that if you have the, the balls, the cojones to buy when other people are panic selling, then usually it means that you are able to buy really great assets at a big discount, although it feels really counterintuitive when everyone around you is just fearful and panicking. But that's why it's important to surround yourself with people that have the same philosophy and mindset when it comes to investing, because that can help you to, to maintain a clear and logical perspective of the market. And that's why watching videos like this are very important. Um, okay. So while the stock market was basically pumping and uh, yeah, only going up, crypto or Bitcoin in general <laughs> wasn't performing that well. So if we look at the uh, one month performance of Bitcoin, you see that we're still quite low. We, we are above the market bottom of around $49,000 per Bitcoin. We are almost 10K above it. But we are still in a very fearful market. Uh, retail, right now, there's practically almost no retail demand. It's all the uh, Black Rocks, the spot ETFs, the banks, the institutions that are buying Bitcoin right now. But the average person right now is completely shitting their pants. They are so fearful and they don't have the courage to get into, into the market. But in fact, right now might be the best, best time to scoop up some cheap Bitcoin and, and other projects. Um, <laughs> I thought this was a funny meme. I had to put it in here too. So altcoins waiting to see what Bitcoin will do next. So that is how the market currently works. Um, altcoins tend to follow what Bitcoin does. If Bitcoin goes up with 3%, altcoins pump with 10, 20, 30%. Um, but right now there isn't really much happening in the Bitcoin space. The market has been moving sideways for quite a while and that's not great for altcoins. Altcoins like to be in a very greedy bumpy environment so before altcoins can really pop probably the greed needs to come back and bitcoin needs to pump as well so if you're investing in in in, in altcoins then probably you need to be a little bit more patient um here is an article that i wanted to show you which basically uh, recaps what i just mentioned in the introduction um, and that is that the u.s government has recently moved around 600 million dollars worth of bitcoin uh, which they seized uh, from Silk Road, which was a dark net uh, marketplace where they sold guns, drugs, etc. Uh, they moved it to a Coinbase wallet to potentially sell and um, make some money. But here's the weird thing. The U.S. government, and you can look this up uh, on this website, U.S. Debt Clock. The U.S. is trillions in debt. How is getting $600 million, not even a billion, going to make a big change for them. It doesn't really make sense. It almost feels like they're trying to make some kind of statement. Um, but this is the case, and this is why the market is panicking. 
it's thinking, all right, you know, we recently saw a uh, U.S. presidential candidate Trump announce at Bitcoin 2024 that he could potentially make Bitcoin a strategic reserve asset. Well, now we're seeing the opposite happen, that the U.S. is basically selling its Bitcoin. So the market is kind of panicking and trying to understand what the perspective of the U.S. government is around Bitcoin and holding Bitcoin in their treasuries. Um, because ideally, we want to see the exact opposite. We want to see governments and countries embrace Bitcoin. We want to see it uh, we want to see them hold it in their treasuries as strategic assets. Um, so let's see and wait if they're actually going to dump, but the market is slightly panicking because of this. So that also kind of uh, has an impact on the current sideways price movement of the current fear in the market. Now, another thing that also happened this week is that the World Health Organization declared MPOX, monkeypox, as a public health emergency of national concern. So some people are panicking and there are rumors spreading that we might see another round of lockdowns. And lockdowns might become the new normal, unfortunately. Um, so we've got a new virus and it's happening right before the US presidential elections are happening. Um, it's not great. Um, that's more fear and uncertainty in the market, but Remember, fear, uncertainty, and doubt are only temporary. Then this tweet. Um, the Chinese house prices have gotten worse in July. So we recently saw a very big decline in the house prices in China. And why is this important for this video? Well, the Chinese economy is very heavily reliant on real estate. Um, I'm not sure if you've ever seen one of those videos on YouTube where you saw that the Chinese have... Uh, mega cities, but they're ghost cities. They're just massive buildings, uh, massive houses that are just sitting vacant. Why? Because somehow in Chinese culture, it became a status symbol to own one, two, three, four, multiple homes. And it was a really big real estate boom. Real estate only went up and up and up until recently that we saw cracks happening in the real estate sector in China. And since the Chinese economy is heavily reliant on real estate for its growth, um, if something, if the, if the real estate sector in China is more heavily impacted and, and it collapses even further, then it will not only impact China, no, because all of the economies worldwide, the entire financial system is completely interconnected. So if something really goes wrong in the Chinese real estate market, it will have ripple effects throughout the global financial markets. And that's why it's also important to keep monitoring this. So. In my videos, I will also keep an eye on this and give you an update about what is really happening in the market. Now, what we're seeing and what I told you earlier is that right now the retail demand in the market is more or less gone. What we're seeing is we're seeing these large institutions and publicly traded companies that are stepping in and scooping up billions uh, bitcoins by the thousands. So Marathon, which is one of the largest Bitcoin mining companies, has recently raised quite a lot of money to buy even more Bitcoin. So right now they just bought another 4,000 Bitcoin and that's huge. They're holding around 25,000 Bitcoin. That's ginormous. Um, and that shows that really the FOMO is not at retail anymore. It's now institutional FOMO that is basically driving this market. We're seeing that the Norwegian and the Swiss central banks um, now own shares in uh, Bitcoin investment companies like MicroStrategy, so the Norwegian Central Bank. Imagine, this is a central bank which is buying Bitcoin through MicroStrategy and through Bitcoin spot ETFs and the Swiss Central Bank. Um, and Barclays also owns Bitcoin. So I keep on repeating this, but we're seeing the great pivot happen right in front of our eyes where banks who were the biggest critics of Bitcoin are now embracing it as a force because um, they cannot compete. They can better embrace it rather than fighting it. We see another big news update. Uh, Apple announces crypto tap to pay for third party developers. So Apple, which yeah, you probably know the success of uh, the iPhone and other Apple products, if they are making it easier for people to pay with crypto, well, then this is going to be a big step uh, towards mass adoption because that's now one of the big problems that people have. For example, my parents or my uncles, like, 
for them, it's a little bit too complicated right now to pay with crypto or even to buy crypto. But if we see large companies that have products and services that people use in an everyday uh, situation, and when those companies are making it easier to transact in crypto, then it's going to become a lot easier for everyone. And that's what we want. We want to have the on-ramps and off-ramps to become a lot easier so that the average person, right now the average person is not active in the crypto market, but when these things happen, the average person will also be able to participate. And that's when more, uh, that's when even more capital will flow into the crypto market. And that's when the floodgates are basically going to open. So these are very bullish developments in the crypto space. Uh, this article, Dubai Court recognizes crypto as a valid salary payment. Again, that's really nice. We want to see real, uh, real life adoption of crypto. In this case, salary. That's such an important role to play. Um, if more and more transactions are happening, uh, it means that it's becoming more mainstream and that we're going to reach mass adoption even sooner. So these articles are really great. Dubai is a little bit mixed about crypto in, 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 in their government policies and their branding. They want to show themselves as being really crypto friendly, but the banks in Dubai don't really like it that much. So it's a little bit, how would I say it, bipolar. They don't really know yet how to incorporate the vision of Dubai into the actual banking system because you do need a lot of banks for, for most of the things that you want to do in a, in a day to day life. Um, now let's have a look, let's zoom out. There's a famous crypto saying, when in doubt, zoom out. So right now the market is very fearful, but if you zoom out and you look at the overall market cycles and you compare the halvings with each other. So you see um, right now we are almost 8% in this market cycle. So we assume that the market cycle is roughly four years and that this pattern keeps on repeating itself over time. You see that usually 8% into this market cycle, like a few weeks or months after the Bitcoin halving, we usually tend to see that Bitcoin pumps. It goes a little bit sideways for a while and then it starts to pump. So all of the pain that we're seeing right now is just to shake the weak hands out of the market. Because in my opinion, I think it's inevitable that we're going to see a face melting Bitcoin bull market cycle happen very soon but you need to be patient and i do believe that the extent to which the market will shoot up is directly directly proportional to how much pain people have right now so the more pain the 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 market is experiencing right now the harder we are going to pump this is not a given but this is what i generally tend to believe um and then here is a really interesting remark by Crypto Rover, and he's saying the real Bitcoin bull market hasn't even started yet. So when you look at Google Trends and you, you check out how many people are looking at Bitcoin, then you see that we are still quite low. Uh, so not that many people are actually searching for Bitcoin right now. Whereas in the bull market cycles, you see these very high peaks of retail demand of people that are searching for Bitcoin on Google. Um, so this is an indicator that we are very, very early. So in my opinion, it's still really great accumulation time. I'm personally buying more and DCAing and buying more Bitcoin mining machines, and I'm preparing for what is about to come next. So let's recap this. The U S government is potentially going to dump $600 million uh, of Bitcoin on the market. And this might create some fear. It might drive the price of Bitcoin down in the short term, but it's important to keep zooming out and understand the long-term trajectory that we are on. It's a given that Bitcoin has a limited supply of 21 million Bitcoin. And while the demand is very limited, sorry, while the supply is very limited, the demand only keeps on going up and up. We see, um, we see the Norwegian central bank that is buying Bitcoin. We see other banks that are buying Bitcoin. We see BlackRock that are buying, that is buying Bitcoin by the thousands. We see other large publicly traded companies that are buying Bitcoin by the hundreds and by the thousands. Like there is not going to be enough for everyone. And I think there's going to be a massive supply shock and bidding war that is going to drive the price of Bitcoin and subsequently also the crypto market up. So don't be afraid, don't be shaken out, don't sell your crypto or Bitcoin to the whales because they are going to be holding and they understand what is going on. So it's important to stay informed. 
And talking about staying informed, if you enjoyed watching this video, you got good value out of it, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you want more updates. All right, peace out. See you in the next one.